Hey everyone, welcome back to Coffee with Joe. We're going to post this the week of August 23rd or 24th, but we're recording it on August 17th, Tuesday, August 17th, just like the last video. Explains why Joe and I are wearing the same shirts, even though you're seeing it a week later. Um, Joe, back to the program for monetary reform. We're still not through it. There's so much great stuff in here. And we were on the topic of the banks in last week's post and how it would work under 100% reserves, how lending would work under 100% reserves, what it would be like for me, the consumer, in a 100% reserve uh, banking system. Um, and now I want to move on to section 16. Um, and the question we get, would there be enough money available when people needed a loan if the banks couldn't create the money on the spot the way they do right now under a uh, fractional reserve system. <laughs> That's um, a bit of a joke. <laughs> number okay. 16. Lest yeah. anyone think that the 100% reserve system would be injurious to the banks, it should be emphasized that the banks would gain quite as truly as the government and the people in general. Government control of the money supply would save the banks from themselves, from the uncoordinated action of some 15,000 independent banks manufacturing and destroying our checkbook money in a haphazard way wow, is yeah. how they say it yeah pete uh so, one, one point i want to make in terms of this question of would there be enough money available um what kind of money people uh would be using savings accounts as an investment because it would not be a demand account you couldn't you would have to commit to a certain period of time and right now, one of the options that we've got for investments, well, you know, you got stocks, you got bonds, and the very safest investment of all, supposedly, is U.S. Treasury securities, T-bills, T-notes, and such. Well, under the reform system, those things wouldn't exist at all. So um, all the money that's going there right now that's coming from personal investors, individual investors, would have to be going somewhere else. So I think there'd be more money available to the banks. For their investment functions. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, that's a handful and a mouthful right there, Pete. It is. Um, I guess you know, Pete. In dis first of all, you know, in discussing adequacy of the money supply and the banks, you know, and 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 money being available for lending, I usually say that if you give me the benefit of the doubt in this discussion, what we would agree upon is that the money supply in either case a fractional reserve or full reserve banking would be exactly the same okay and that is to say the proper amount of money in existence and if you give me the you know the advantage of that to have a discussion with how can there not be any money available but having said that Pete I want to point out the, the how ludicrous it is because right now we're living with today's fractional reserve banking system Pete you know we got it. We got you know a trillion dollars of excess reserves. You know at least a trillion dollars of excess reserves. So how's the fractional reserve banking system doing for keeping us with adequate money for loans? Okay, <clears throat> this is precisely what the authors of this document, uh, you know, intended to correct the lawless invariability of the supply of our circulating medium. It's manifesting itself today with the problems that we have, and it is completely able to be corrected by series, the series of actions that include changing to full reserve banking and having a monetary authority determine the amount of money going into existence and the government issuing it into existence without any debt. Now, you know, to me, Pete, people that can actually understand what I just said, comprehend what I just said, juxtapose what I just said against the fraction of reserve banking system and the situation that we're in right now today, Pete, and then come out and say in any way that fraction of reserve banking is superior, would be superior to this type of monetary reform, I just do not feel that they are, you know, are being open-minded or capable of being open-minded about what needs to happen. Now, having said that, um, <clears throat> if you take the program's proposal, Pete, okay, the program's proposal says that the government would, uh, because remember, it's 39, it says the government would issue real money, 
Okay. Now they called it real money because it was, you know, the dollar, you know, United States dollars to the banks, uh, equivalent to the, the 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 difference between total loans in existence and whatever their holdings were of treasuries, which are obligations of the government. So that there's already is an obligation of the government there, and so they only providing the balance. Okay, and you know, therefore they're backing fully every loan that is in existence. There's a backing fully of every loan that is in existence. The money supply stays exactly the same. Okay, uh, Any changes in the money supply are going to come from the creation of new money by whatever method, by the method that's in the program. But if I could just update it to the proposal of the American Monetary Institute, which is really what we're advocating, Pete, okay? that we, which is a proposal you know, of basically doing the same thing, you know, Pete, doing the same exact thing, but only because we're in a modern era of computerized money, if you will, okay, uh, replacing what is essentially bank credit now with what, uh, which, what, with what the author of that program calls uh, United States money. Now, United States money is going to replace fractional reserve bank money. Why? Because fractional reserve bank money is bank credit money of a private bank, and it's, it has no business serving as the currency of a of a sovereign nation such as we are. But having done that, and again, the difference between that and the treasuries that are hold, held by the banks, the entire banking system has been made whole, Pete, okay? There's an entire, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, replenishment of, with United States money of the bank credit money. So how could the banks possibly be not able to uh, have money for lending? And 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 uh, and 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 when you take and and instill uh, the confidence and the certainty in the money system of the country that would come about by this type of a transition, uh, the bankers should be very happy, Pete, to be operated within within such a system. So to me, it's a total, uh, it's total, it's being totally misinformed to think that it's not a transition that can take place. Uh, in an orderly manner and come out the other side having adequate money for everything that we can possibly do in our national economy, Pete. Well, Joe, the, uh, the individual bank may not have the deposit on hand of real money for a loan that somebody comes in and wants to take out. So there would need to be some clearinghouse to find out a bank uh, somewhere that had excess deposits on hand available for lending. But this could be like a, the overnight functions that go on right now between the Fed and the banks. There's some kind of a clearinghouse. It could be government run. could probably right. even be privately run. Right. Uh, as long as it's real money, is there's nothing really at risk. Right. Um, right. And they wouldn't need to have, uh, if they're given a 30-year mortgage for a couple hundred thousand bucks to buy a house, they don't need a deposit for 30 years for a couple hundred thousand bucks from one depositor. They don't have to match up one for one. Exactly. Um, the bank's yeah, exactly. job would be to go and find, you know, the combinations of money over over what periods of time to uh, to make up to make up the loan. Yeah, Joe, the thing, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well I was gonna say I was gonna say it is the demand for loans that determines the economic activity. And none of that would ever change, Pete. And all that would need to happen is the facilitation of there being money available to, to, to provide for those loans. And that, I mean, that is something that happens with the free movement of capital once we have the level, level playing field of, of debt-free money and full reserve banking. Joe, it's, I think we got time. This would be a good place to read the Robert Hemphill quote again, which is in the introduction to Irving Fisher's book, 100% Money from 1936, and of course Irving Fisher is one of the authors of the Program for Monetary Reform. Quoting Robert Hemphill, credit manager and employee of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. If all the bank loans were paid, no one would have a bank deposit, and there would be not a dollar or of coin or currency in circulation. This is a staggering thought. We are completely dependent on the commercial banks. Someone has to borrow every dollar we have in circulation, cash or credit. If the banks create ample synthetic money, we are pros prosperous. If not, we starve. We are absolutely without a permanent money system. When one gets a complete grasp of the picture, the tragic absurdity of our hopeless position is almost incredible, but there it is. 
It is the most important subject intelligent persons can investigate and reflect upon. It is so important that our present civilization may collapse unless it becomes widely understood and the defects remedied very soon. Well, they weren't remedied very soon after 1936. The program for monetary reform uh, got laid on the dust heap of history until the American Monetary Institute got it out and copied an old an old copy and and people like us are starting to talk about it again but um clearly we're teetering on the brink our economy was not fixed two years ago and it needs uh, a serious rewiring and replumbing job which these reforms that we're talking about would accomplish right so very very true pete on that thought joe i think we're out of time okay and uh we'll see you next week All right, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, buddy.